previous year questions. It is a very, very prominent uh, topic. In prelims, they have asked a number of questions and consistently they are asking questions every year in the prelims. Thing to be considered is what is the time period in which it can produce double the amount of fissile material. India is uh, very aware of this and they are taking the most stringent measures. Uh, one very significant thing in our program is that uh, our waste management is very different from all parts of the world. Hello and welcome to the conversational video series brought to you by Vision IS. At a time when India's energy mix is fossil fuel dominated, it is nuclear power which holds key for a departure from coal based power generation. With the recent core loading of the prototype fast builder reactor at Kalpakam in Tamil Nadu, India is gradually moving towards a nuclear power driven energy sector. In that context, to enlighten us about India's nuclear power program, Today we have with us an eminent Vision as faculty member, Jasmine Ma'am. Welcome Ma'am. Hello Shiranjeet. Ma'am, let's begin this conversation by shedding some light on the history of India's nuclear power program. How did it all start? So India's interest in nuclear technology uh, goes back to the time of uh, even before the independence. We had scientists like C.V. Raman and uh, Dr. Homi Baba, whose work and interest started before independence. But formally, uh, it was after independence. In uh, 1948, we had the Atomic Energy Commission, which was set up. This was headed by Dr. Homi J. Baba. And uh, with his work, then India came up with the three-stage nuclear power program. This was uh, coming with the objective of peaceful use of nuclear technology. You just mentioned India's three-stage nuclear power program. What exactly are the three stages? So, uh, Chiranjit, we have to think about this as uh, the situation, the scenario in which this came up. This is a newly independent uh, country who wants to be self-reliant in all areas. So, uh, the three-stage program is devised with that objective for India to become uh, self-reliant, to have a sustainable energy creation program. In this now, utilization of indigenous resources was what decided how the program will be designed. So, uh, in terms of nuclear resources all around the world, uranium is used. But in India, we have only 1 to 2 percent of the world's uranium which is available which can be used. But uh, we have thorium. Thorium is not exactly which can directly be used in a nuclear reactor. Nuclear reactor requires a fissile material. Fissile means something which can undergo fission. It can break down and release energy. So, uranium is fissile. So, that's why everywhere uranium is used. Thorium is what we call a fertile material. Thorium can be converted into a fissile material. So, India planned the whole thing like this, that we have three stages. In the first stage, we can start with uh, uranium. And then coming to our last stage, the third stage, we will start using thorium, which we have in abundance. We have more than 25% of the world's known thorium reserves. So India wanted to cap on this so that in its long future, it can have a sustainable energy production by using its own fuel, by using its own resources. So the plan was to create a closed fuel cycle. Closed fuel cycle means that from one stage to the second to the third, we use the same fuel and from uranium, we finally reach a stage where we can incorporate thorium. It was indeed a wise step to start with the first leg, which was uranium dependent and gradually move towards a thorium based nuclear power generation. Ma'am, could you shed some light on the first leg or the first stage of our India's uh, nuclear power program? So the first stage uh, starts in um, 1960s, around 64, we uh, come up with our first nuclear power uh, plant in Tarapur. And here we will be using uh, the natural uranium. So, we have a pressurized heavy water uh, reactor which would be used at this stage and the natural uranium which is uh, used as a fuel here, that would be into plutonium 239 and this plutonium is also a fissile material which then can go on to be used in the next stage. Now, there is something special about India's first stage. We made it D2O based or deuterium oxide based which is normally called heavy water. 
Why was that? So, uh, this is a very interesting point and this is uh, I think uh, something very smart India has done because around the world they were using water. Uh, the light water. So, they uh, in the f first stage of most uh, countries, they used uh, the pressurized water reactor which was light water. Now, this kind of a nuclear reactor required enriched uranium. Okay. Enrichment of uranium means increasing the amount of fissile material, material in natural uranium. When we talk about natural uranium, it has a lot of different isotopes of uranium and not all isotopes are fissile. Not all isotopes can be used as a fuel. So, when we enrich it, we increase the amount of fissile material. So, India had this choice. Either it uses enriched uranium which can go into the light water reactor or it uses natural uranium which can go into the pressurized heavy water reactor. So, either it made enriched uranium or it would have to make heavy water. These were the choices. Now, at that stage, this heavy water creation and setting up of heavy water facilities, that was faster, that required less money. So, we could uh, very quickly adapt to this and start our reactors. So, that is why India decided that instead of, you know, uh, developing in uh, uranium enrichment plants, they would set up a heavy water plants, which could then directly use the natural uranium mined in India. Thank you so much, ma'am. Now coming to the second stage, I think we had set a deadline of 2012, but it got delayed due to some reasons. Could you tell us what the reasons are exactly? See, uh, the second stage, you are very right, uh, 2012 was the timeline, but uh, the calculations were uh, not very uh, perfect, we will say. What happened at that point of time was, uh, there were a number of conditions internationally which kind of delayed our whole thing. So, in this, uh, we uh, have to talk about the military side of our uh, nuclear technology also. So, the nuclear test, the first nuclear test in 1974 in Pokhran. When that happened uh, and India developed its nuclear weapons, the world got uh, very aware of this development and there were a lot of sanctions which were put on India. And there was a lot of watching of India's nuclear developments which were happening. So, the plan which was there, uh, which was to use enriched uranium in the second stage, that uranium was supposed to come from France. But here what happened was with the sanctions after that uh, uh, testing of uh, in Pokhran, France did not go about with that deal. So, we had no option of getting enriched uranium from anywhere. So, we had to change the whole original plan in a way so that we can again use natural uranium. So, that kind of changed our capabilities, that kind of, you know, messed up the whole calculation. The other thing was uh, that while India had started doing this, most parts of the world were that second stage, which is a fast breeder reactor, which was used, they had either finished that stage, they were not, no longer using uh, that those breeder reactors or uh, they had stopped work because there were a lot of safety concerns here. So, India did not get a lot of technological help also from anywhere else because that kind of a thing was not happening anywhere. So, everything had to be indigenously done. So, that took more time. Understanding those technological capabilities took more time, but now we have finally started that. Uh, the prototype was working, so we have more than 30 years of that experimental setup working, but now we can finally take that stage to produce energy. Now, ma'am, could you shed some light on the second stage of the India's nuclear power program? So, in the first stage, uh, after uranium was used, we received plutonium. Now, this plutonium is going into the second stage. We have what we call a fast breeder reactor. This is a brilliant innovation where we have what we call breeding. Breeding means that you feed some fuel into the reactor, but it gives you more fuel than it consumes. So, plutonium 239 is used and as a result, it as a byproduct in the end, more plutonium 239 is used. So, what we are doing is we are using a mix of plutonium and uranium in this and this uranium which is there, this is uranium 238, this can take neutrons and change into plutonium. So, plutonium once is used for energy and through uranium more plutonium is 
produced. This is the second stage which we have just started now. So ma'am, the second stage was well explained. Now let's come to the third stage, which in which we're going to use advanced heavy water reactors and it's going to be thorium based. How is it going to function? So here, uh, like in the second stage, we said this, it's a breeder reactor. So plutonium-239 uh, is being produced here. Now, what we can do is at this stage, when we have sufficient fissile material, sufficient fissile material in the form of plutonium, we can introduce thorium. This gets introduced in the second stage itself. This thorium, I, as I said earlier, is fertile. It can take in, uh, it can capture neutron and it will turn into uranium-233. This uranium-233 is now fissile and it will sustain a chain reaction. It can then produce energy in the long term. And like you mentioned, we are going to be using an advanced heavy, uh, heavy water reactor in this. So this is the final stage. Once we use, start using thorium, it will continue with thorium for hundreds of years. Thank you, ma'am taking into consideration our current nuclear capabilities and we have also seen in the past there have been several nuclear disasters. How effective are India's safety measures as regards nuclear facilities? So uh, safety of course is very important like I mentioned earlier also in a lot of countries this concern is there that uh, if these are not safe and we've had some uh, big accidents also like uh, the Fukushima nuclear power plant in Japan. So India is uh, very aware of this and they are taking the most stringent measures. Uh, one very significant thing in our program is that uh, our waste management is very different from all parts of the world. So in all the stages, we are taking the waste, we are reprocessing it. Like I said, it's a closed fuel cycle. In that same cycle, we are using the fuel which comes out from one stage, we are reprocessing it and we are using it in the next stage. So we don't have a lot of waste which can be, you know, uh, responsible for any kind of accidents or, you know, that disposal of that waste is a problem. Along with that, uh, we have a dedicated uh, organization uh, for uh, the Atomic Energy Regulatory Board, which has been set up for all our civil nuclear pr uh, programs and, uh, you know, taking care of all those nuclear power plants. Like currently, we have around 24 nuclear power plants running in India. So they make sure they have very stringent operationalizing procedure. They have emergency procedures in place. and. We also have the involvement of the International Atomic Energy Agency, which is now setting interna an international protocol, which we are also incorporating into our safety procedures. I mean, what, in one of your answers, you mentioned nuclear diplomacy, which helped India to come out of the international sanctions. Could you shed some light on the India-United States Civil Nuclear Pact, how it has impacted? Yes, this is, this is a... Um, a very significant landmark event in this whole thing. So India uh, is uh, one country which wants to further its civil program also and there is a military program also and because of that like we mentioned sanctions were there. Now after this deal has been signed between India and US, we are allowed to become a part of the nuclear trade. We have a nuclear suppliers group which has, uh, you know, removed the waiver of India. So India can buy uranium now from uh, different countries, different uh, players in the world. And that uranium is available at a very reasonable cost. So that creates a scenario where India can, uh, you know, further its nuclear ca capabilities, uh, run its power uh, plants well, and probably, you know, achieve the targets of the three stages a little faster than it would have with its own limited resources. One concern, however, is there in this that uh, there are arguments that criticism against this deal that that now that you have uranium, your incentive to, you know, work on thorium, that would not be there. So uh, it might derail the whole three stage program. That's one argument, but the government, uh, when this deal was signed, and uh, with the kind of estimates they have brought in, they do see this as a very positive step. And uh, this does provide more uh, chances of innovation and uh, no limitation of resources means that we can just speed up and improve our uh, nuclear power technology. You said that there's a possibility of derailment of the current plan because of the civil nuclear pact. And also there has been some delay related to the second stage. 
how soon can we expect nuclear power to make a substantial contribution to india's energy mix so here uh, we have to first understand when can we reach the third stage right that's the important big big question because you just started the core loading on the second stage so there is something called doubling time so second stage is a breeder reactor that means it is making more fissile material so the thing to be considered is what is the time period in which it can produce double the amount of fissile material that is the stage where thorium will be added now when uh, dr baba he had uh, you know started this discussion and according to his basic theoretical calculations he said it will take 5 to 6 years for doubling time to be achieved then as we understood technology better as we understood what can be the real ground challenges of operating that uh, it was said that it will take 70 years right and uh, now the situation is this that uh, we say that we can create shorter doubling time uh, cycles so in that also a minimum of 30 to 40 years will be needed so if you are starting the second stage now so maybe after 2050 that's the time period at least where we can have uh, thorium actively being involved and we say that's when thorium we start using when we start mining and putting it into our reactors that is when the real growth will happen that is when uh, nuclear energy is expected to take a very higher share in our energy mix right and uh, first stage that, that target was 10 gigawatts that the idea was that we uh, first produce 10 gigawatts then we go to the second stage so now roughly 10 gigawatts energy we have achieved that that potential through our current first stage second stage mein the target is uh, 50 gigawatts so once we achieve that then it's going to be a speed rolling thing after that in the okay. third stage hopefully we'll achieve our results our goals very soon uh, now since most of our viewers are upsc aspirants a relevant question how important is this particular topic from both prelims and mains perspective this uh, if you just take a look at the uh, previous year questions it is a very very prominent uh, topic in prelims they have asked a number of questions and consistently they are asking questions every year in the prelims that is mostly about the reactor that which reactors we have which fuel we will use plutonium is used where uranium is used where like that on this india's three stage nuclear plant in mains also we have had a lot of questions like in the past 10 years 5 6 questions have been asked on this again specific uh three stage program they want you to explain that they want you to explain uh the significance of that and then all the other ideas as to energy security and in light of climate change and clean energy and safety all of those aspects linked to the main program per se that has been there along with of course the questions uh understanding in the energy landscape as a whole in that this becomes very important uh because uh, we have a lot of discussion on the need for cleaner fuels we also have that problem of energy scarcity especially like you started with uh, discussing about fossil fuels and coal which is a major part of thermal power plants that being a limit, very very limited so in that these alternative sources all of these like nuclear solar wind hydro they are going to become more and more important this is where a lot of technological innovation is happening also and for government also emphasizing on these new and renewable uh, resources that is a big deal so for that whole thing comprehensively if you have to talk about this uh, would be very important for our aspirants thank you so much ma'am i think we have comprehensively covered the various dimensions of india's nuclear power program thank you so much for your time and valuable insights now aspirants we hope you liked and enjoyed the session we'll keep coming up with more such sessions till then wish you all the very best